As the twilight deepens and the world outside quiets to the gentle rhythm of the night, I invite you to join me in a journey not through space, but through time and imagination. Picture yourself in a realm where the boundaries between the possible and the impossible blur, where ancient magic whispers in the wind and mysteries long buried await to be unearthed. This is your sanctuary, a place where the worries of the day melt away like mist under the morning sun, and the only thing that exists is the story that unfolds before your mind's eye. Tonight, we will embark on an adventure to a kingdom of old, to a time when castles stood as pillars of strength and mystery. Within the deepest vault beneath one such castle, an ancient mirror lies hidden, its secrets locked away in silence. But as the stars take their places in the night sky, our tale begins with the discovery of this mirror, and with it, a destiny that could reshape the future itself. So, let the day's burdens fall from your shoulders. Allow your eyes to close gently and your breath to slow. With each word, let yourself drift further into this world we create together, a world where dreams and reality intertwine. Welcome to the Mirror of Tomorrow. Let the story carry you away into a peaceful slumber, into dreams as boundless and mysterious as the tale itself. Chapter 1 The Awakening of the Mirror In the deepest vault beneath the castle, where the air hung heavy with the dust of forgotten centuries, there lay an ancient mirror. Its frame, wrought from silver and shadows, was adorned with the runes of a language lost to time. It had slept undisturbed through the reigns of kings and queens until one fateful night, a lowly servant named Alara, seeking refuge from a storm, stumbled upon its resting place. Ilara, with hands roughened by toil and eyes wide with wonder, brushed the cobwebs from the mirror's surface. As her fingers traced the cold metal, the air around her shimmered and the mirror awoke. Its surface, once dull and lifeless, now glowed with an ethereal light and within its depths, whispers began to form. They spoke of power, of secrets hidden within the folds of time, and of visions that could shape the destiny of kingdoms. Captivated by the mirror's promises, Elara returned to it night after night. The whispers grew into voices, telling her of events yet to unfold, of treacheries hidden within the court, and of wealth beyond imagination. Each secret revealed drew Alara deeper into the mirror's grasp until she could no longer keep its existence to herself. Driven by a desire for favor, or perhaps by the mirror's own insidious influence, Alara sought an audience with the king. She spoke of the mirror's power, of the futures it foretold and of the prosperity it could bring to the kingdom. Intrigued by her tales, the king commanded that the mirror be brought to him, thus sealing the fate of the realm. As the mirror was installed in the royal chambers, the air within the castle seemed to shift. Whispers that once echoed in the darkness now danced in the halls of power, and the kingdom stood on the brink of an era guided by the visions of the mirror. But as the king would soon learn, the future, like the mirror's surface, can be a reflection of both hope and despair. As the days turned to weeks, the mirror's place within the heart of the kingdom was solidified. King Alden, once a ruler of cautious deliberation, found himself increasingly dependent on the mirror's foresight. His decisions, guided by the whispering visions, 
brought prosperity to the kingdom. Crops flourished, and threats from neighbouring lands were quelled before they could burgeon into war. The people, unaware of the source, rejoiced in their good fortune, praising their king's wisdom. Yet, with each glimpse into the future, a shadow grew behind the light. The king's reliance on the mirror did not go unnoticed by the court. Nobles and advisers, once content to play their roles in the governance of the realm, now watched with a mix of awe and envy. The mirror, an oracle of unmatched power, became the silent centre around which the court's ambitions orbited. Lady Verena, the king's closest advisor, observed the changes with a keen eye. She noted the king's secretive visits to the chamber where the mirror was kept and the way decisions were made with a newfound confidence. Her ambition, veiled behind a mask of loyalty, drove her to uncover the source of the king's power. Night after night, she wandered the castle's ancient halls until at last she heard the mirror's whispers through the heavy oak doors of its chamber. Convinced of the need to possess the mirror's visions for herself, Lady Verena began to weave a web of intrigue. She approached Lord Harrow, a noble of significant influence but waning fortune, with a proposition. Together, they conspired to gain control of the mirror believing that with it, they could reshape the kingdom in their image. Meanwhile, Queen Isolde, a woman of both beauty and wisdom, watched her husband grow more distant with each passing day. She saw the joy of his early reign replaced by a feverish obsession with unseen futures. Troubled by the changes in him, and the murmurs of unrest among the court, she sought the counsel of the sage Emrys, a man of ancient knowledge and discerning eye. Emrys, having lived through the reigns of many kings and seen the rise and fall of empires, listened to the queen's fears with a grave solemnity. He spoke to her of the mirror's origins, a creation of magic long forbidden bound to bring as much ruin as it did revelation. He warned that the mirror's power came at a price, one that the kingdom was not yet aware it was paying. With the sage's words echoing in her heart, Queen Isolde made a vow. She would protect her kingdom and her husband from the mirror's malignant influence. But to do so, she would need to act with caution the court was a nest of vipers, and the mirror had already begun to poison their minds with visions of power and glory. As the kingdom teetered on the brink of unseen disaster, the queen and the sage began to plot in secret. They knew that to remove the mirror from the king's possession would not be enough. Its allure would always linger, a siren call to those hungry for power. They needed to uncover the means to destroy it, to sever the threads of fate it wove through the fabric of the kingdom. In the quietude that precedes dawn, when shadows meld with the lingering night, Queen Isolde and the sage Emrys met in the castle's oldest garden. This place, forgotten by all but the moon, held secrets of its own, secrets that now paled in comparison to the task before them. The mirror, Emrys began. His voice, a whisper among the whispering leaves, was forged in an age when magic flowed as freely as the rivers. It was created not for malice, but as a beacon of hope. Yet, like all things of power, it was coveted, and fear led to its imprisonment here, beneath the earth. Isolde, her face a mask of resolve lit by the first light of dawn, listened intently. How then do we destroy such a thing? If it was made in hope, why does it bring us now to the brink of despair? The mirror's essence is bound to the realm of possibilities, to the futures it reveals, Emrys explained. 
To destroy it, we must sever that connection. But the knowledge to do so has been lost to time. A silence fell between them, broken only by the distant call of a waking bird. It was a silence filled with the weight of their task, a task that seemed more insurmountable with each passing moment. Yet, it was in this silence that determination was born. Then we must seek out this lost knowledge, Isolde declared. There must be records, legends, anything that can guide us. Emrys nodded. There are places, hidden libraries of the old magic, where such knowledge might still linger. But the journey is fraught with peril, and the places are guarded against those who would seek to misuse their secrets. We have no choice, Isolde said, her voice firm. I will face whatever dangers lie ahead for the sake of our kingdom, for Alden. And so, with the first rays of the sun casting long shadows upon the garden, their pact was sealed. Isolde and Emrys would venture into the forgotten corners of the world, seeking the means to destroy the mirror and free their kingdom from its grasp. Meanwhile, within the castle, Lady Verena and Lord Harrow's machinations grew ever more daring. Under the guise of loyalty, they sought to undermine the King's trust in those who would warn him of the mirror's danger. They spread rumours, sowed discord, all the while edging closer to their goal of seizing the mirror for themselves. But the mirror, ever watchful, ever whispering, began to weave its own plans. It had seen the threads of its own destruction in the myriad futures that unfolded in its depths, and it would not go quietly into oblivion. As the day of the Grand Ball approached, the castle buzzed with anticipation and the air was thick with the scent of intrigue. The courtiers, adorned in their finest silks and jewels, were oblivious to the undercurrents that flowed beneath their feet, currents that threatened to pull the very ground from under them. Lady Verena and Lord Harrow, with their ambitions cloaked behind smiles, and courteous bows move through the throngs of nobility with a predatory grace. Their whispers, laden with veiled promises and subtle threats, found fertile ground among those who harboured their own aspirations of power. King Alden, meanwhile, remained ensconced within his chambers, the mirror his only companion. The whispers had grown louder, more insistent, painting visions of a kingdom unrivaled in wealth and power. Yet, in the mirror's depths, shadows lurked, hinting at a cost yet to be paid. Unknown to all, Queen Isolde and the sage Emrys prepared to embark on their perilous journey. Under the cover of night, they slipped away from the castle, their departure unnoticed by all but a select few. The path they sought led them through ancient forests and across forgotten paths, each step taking them closer to the knowledge they sought. Back within the stone walls of the castle, the night of the Grand Ball arrived. The Great Hall, lit by a thousand candles, was a sea of swirling colours and laughing faces. Music filled the air, a melody that seemed to dance with the flickering shadows. Yet, amidst the revelry, the game of power continued. Lady Verena, with a word here, a glance there, tightened her web of influence. Lord Harrow, ever at her side, watched with a hawk's eye for any sign of weakness among their peers. But it was not among the dancers or the diners that the night's most fateful encounter took place. In a secluded corner of the garden, hidden from prying eyes, Lady Verena met with a figure cloaked in shadow. The figure, a messenger from beyond the kingdom's borders, brought news that would alter the course of their plans. The mirror, 
the figure whispered, the words barely audible above the rustle of leaves, is not what it seems. Its power is bound to the soul of the kingdom. To control it is to control the very heart of the realm. Lady Verena's eyes gleamed with avarice. And what of its destruction? She inquired, her voice as smooth as silk. The messenger's reply, a mere breath of sound, sent a shiver down her spine. To destroy the mirror is to risk the kingdom's undoing. Armed with this new knowledge, Lady Verena returned to the ball, her mind racing with possibilities. The mirror, a prize beyond measure, was within her grasp, but the stakes were higher than she had imagined. As the first light of dawn crept over the horizon, the grand ball drew to a close. The laughter and music that had filled the air faded away, leaving behind a silence that spoke of secrets shared and plans laid in the shadow of night. The kingdom, unaware, stood on the brink of change, its fate entwined with the ambitions of the few. In the quiet that followed, Lady Verena and Lord Harrow retreated to the privacy of a hidden chamber, their minds alight with the possibilities revealed by the mysterious messenger. The mirror's power, once a beacon of hope, now shone as a double-edged sword, offering control at a perilous cost. We must act swiftly, Lady Verena declared, her eyes reflecting the resolve that hardened her heart. The mirror's power is ours for the taking, but we must be prepared to bear its burden. Lord Harrow, ever the pragmatist, nodded in agreement. We will need allies, he cautioned, and we must ensure the king remains oblivious to our intentions. Their plot, woven in the dark, sought to ensnare the kingdom in a web of deception. By day, they would play their roles in the court, the loyal subjects, while by night, they would work to unravel the secrets of the mirror's power. Meanwhile, far from the castle's stone walls, Queen Isolde and Emrys ventured deeper into the realm of ancient magics. Each step took them further from the world they knew, into lands whispered of in legends where the veil between the seen and the unseen grew thin. The journey was fraught with challenges, for the paths to ancient knowledge were guarded not by beasts of flesh and blood, but by trials of the spirit. They faced their fears, confronted their doubts, and through their trials forged a bond that transcended the mere quest they had embarked upon. Back in the kingdom, as the sun rose high and the day wore on, whispers of the previous night's revelries turned to murmurs of unrest. The courtiers, once united in their pursuit of pleasure, now eyed each other with suspicion, their alliances frayed by the secrets they kept. It was in this atmosphere of brewing storm that the mirror, silent observer of the souls that passed before it, began to weave its final plot. The visions it showed grew darker, more urgent, as if it sought to hasten the kingdom's descent into chaos. But it was not only the hearts of men and women that the mirror could sway. From the shadows watched a figure, unnoticed by all, a servant who had once stumbled upon the mirror in its slumber. Ilara, for she was the one who had first awakened the mirror, had seen the change it wrought upon the kingdom. With courage born of desperation, she resolved to act, to save her kingdom from the fate that loomed before it. As night fell once more upon the kingdom, a meeting was held in secret, away from prying eyes. Elara, Lady Verena and Lord Harrow each driven by their own desires, found themselves entangled in the mirror's final gambit. Unbeknownst to them, 
their actions would set the stage for the events that were to unfold. Events that would determine the fate of the kingdom and all who called it home. Chapter 2 The Band of Whiskers and Wings Beneath the boughs of ancient trees, where moonlight danced upon the leaves, the creatures of the enchanted forest gathered. This was no ordinary assembly, for the forest hummed with a magic of its own, a magic that spoke to the heart of every beast that tread upon its mossy floor. At the center of the glade, under the watchful gaze of the moon, stood Reynard, a fox of unparalleled cunning. His coat, a fiery red against the night, shimmered with a light not wholly of this world. Beside him, perched upon an age-old oak, was Athena, an owl whose wisdom was as vast as the forest itself. Her eyes, deep pools of knowledge, reflected the resolve that had brought them all together. Friends, Reynard began, his voice carrying through the glade. We stand at the edge of destiny. The humans in their folly have unearthed a power they cannot comprehend. The mirror of tomorrow, an artifact of ancient magic, now lies within the grasp of the king. A murmur spread among the gathered animals. Many had heard rumors of the mirror, whispers of its power to reveal the future, but few had believed such a thing could exist. Athena's voice, when she spoke, was like the rustle of leaves in the wind. The mirror holds the key to our salvation. For too long, we have watched as our homes were destroyed, our families torn apart. This is our chance to create a future where we live in harmony with the humans, not as subjects, but as equals. Her words struck a chord within the hearts of those who listened. For generations, they had lived in the shadow of human expansion, their voices silenced by the march of progress. But how? Called out a stag from the back. The castle is guarded, the mirror kept under lock and key. How can we, mere animals of the forest, hope to succeed where others would fail? Reynard's smile was sharp, a glint of mischief in his eyes. Because, my friend, we possess what they do not. We have the wisdom of Athena, who sees what others cannot. We have the strength of the bear, the agility of the squirrel, and the loyalty of the wolf. Together, we are more than a match for any human god. For any the animals, emboldened by Reynard's words, began to murmur among themselves, a tide of determination rising in their midst. It is settled then, Athena declared, her voice rising above the din. We will form a pact, a bond forged in the desire for a better future. Together, we will retrieve the mirror of tomorrow from the castle and use its power to shape a world where all creatures, human and animal alike, can live in peace. One by one, the animals stepped forward pledging their allegiance to the course. From the smallest mouse to the tallest deer, each offered their skills, their courage, and their hope. As the meeting drew to a close, Reynard and Athena shared a glance, an unspoken acknowledgement of the journey ahead. The path would be fraught with danger, the outcome uncertain, but in their hearts, they knew the risk was worth the promise of a brighter tomorrow. And so, under the light of a silver moon, the band of whiskers and wings was born, a coalition of creatures bound by a shared vision. They dispersed into the night, each to their own tasks, the air alive with the buzz of whispered plans and the flutter of wings. The quest to steal the mirror of tomorrow had begun, a tale of courage and cunning that would echo through the ages. 
a reminder of the power of unity in the face of adversity. In the days that followed the gathering at Moonlit Glade, the forest was alive with activity. The band of whiskers and wings, as they had come to be known, set about planning their daring heist. Each animal, from the smallest mouse to the swiftest hawk, was tasked with a role that played to their unique abilities. Renard, with his cunning and agility, was to lead the infiltration of the castle. His knowledge of the hidden paths and secret corridors, gleaned from nights spent prowling the castle's outskirts, made him the perfect choice for navigating the dangers that lay within. Athena, whose wisdom was unparalleled, would serve as the strategist. From her perch high above the forest, she could see all. Her keen eyes would watch over the band, guiding them through the shadows and alerting them to any unseen threats. Bramble, a bear of imposing stature and strength, was tasked with the heavy lifting. His role was crucial for the final stage of the heist, where brute force might be needed to secure their prize. Whisk, a squirrel with a knack for tight spaces, was chosen to navigate the narrowest passages. Her agility and speed would allow her to scout ahead, ensuring the path was clear of guards and traps. And then there was Shadow, a wolf with a loyal heart and a silent step. He would be their guardian, watching from the darkness, ready to defend the band from any who might seek to stop them. Together, they plotted their course, each step weighed and measured against the risks they would face. They knew that the success of their mission hinged not just on their individual strengths, but on their ability to work as one. As the final plans were laid, Reynard addressed the band. Tonight, we embark on a journey that will change the fate of our world. We go not as predators and prey, but as allies united in a common cause. Let us remember the strength of the pack is the wolf, and the strength of the wolf is the pack. His words were met with a chorus of agreement, a symphony of growls, chirps, and rustling feathers. In that moment, the differences that had once divided them were forgotten, replaced by a bond forged in the heat of shared purpose. The plan was simple in its design, yet complex in its execution. They would enter the castle under the cover of night, using the shadows as their cloak. Reynard and Whisk would lead the way, with Bramble and Shadow close behind. Athena, from her vantage point, would direct their movements, her sharp eyes catching any detail that might hinder their progress. Their destination was the royal chambers, where the mirror of tomorrow was said to reside. The path would be perilous, fraught with guards and magical wards. But they were determined, for in their hearts, they carried the hope of a future where the lines that divided them were erased. A future where all could live in harmony. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting the forest in twilight, the band of whiskers and wings set forth. Their steps were silent, their resolve unbreakable, as they ventured into the unknown guided by the light of the stars and the fire of their conviction. The heist, born of necessity and fueled by courage, was more than a mission. It was a testament to the power of unity. For on that night, as they slipped through the darkness, the animals of the forest proved that even the smallest among them could change the world. Under the cloak of night, the band of whiskers and wings made their approach. The castle's towering silhouette a daunting sentinel against the starlit sky. The air was charged with anticipation. 
each heartbeat a drum roll to the impending act that would seal their place in legend. Reynard, with Whisk at his side, led the vanguard, their movements shadows within shadows. The castle, with its stone walls and towering spires, had stood for centuries as a symbol of human dominion. But tonight, it would witness the cunning and resolve of the forest. The first obstacle they encountered was the outer wall, a formidable barrier meant to deter the most determined of intruders. But Reynard, with a glint of mischief in his eyes, had foreseen this challenge. Whisk, with her nimble form and boundless energy, scurried up the wall, her tiny claws finding purchase in the smallest of crevices. At the top she unravelled a vine, a lifeline thrown to her companions below. One by one they ascended, from the agile Reynard to the mighty Bramble, whose sheer strength was a spectacle in itself. Shadow followed, a wraith in the darkness, his keen senses alert to any sign of danger. Within the walls, the castle lay sleeping, its inhabitants unaware of the drama unfolding in their midst. But the band of whiskers and wings knew better than to underestimate the defences that lay ahead. Magic, both ancient and powerful, protected the heart of the castle where the mirror of tomorrow was kept. Athena, from her vantage point on high, whispered guidance to her companions. Her voice carried on the wind. Beware the enchanted guardians, she warned her eyes piercing the darkness. They see not with eyes, but with spirits attuned to the intrusion of the unwelcome. Heeding her warning, the band pressed on, their path a maze of shadowed corridors and silent halls. Reynard and Whisk, with their keen senses, navigated the labyrinth, each turn bringing them closer to their goal. As they neared the royal chambers, they encountered their greatest challenge yet. Enchanted guardians, soldiers wrought from spellbound armour, stood sentinel, their presence an insurmountable barrier to any ordinary thief. But the band of whiskers and wings were far from ordinary. Bramble, understanding the need for a distraction, stepped forward. With a roar that shook the very stones of the castle, he charged, his formidable form a blur of speed and power. The guardians, bound by magic to respond to such threats, converged on him, leaving the path to the mirror unguarded. Seizing the moment, Reynard and the others slipped past, their hearts pounding with adrenaline. Shadow, ever the protector, lingered at the rear, ensuring their escape route remained open. At last, they stood before the chamber that housed the Mirror of Tomorrow. The door, an ancient relic carved with runes of protection, posed a final riddle to be solved. But Whisk, with her keen mind and dexterous paws, found the key hidden in the patterns of the wood. With a click that echoed like destiny calling, the door swung open. Inside, the mirror of tomorrow awaited, its surface shimmering with a light that seemed to pulse with the beat of the world's heart. The animals, awestruck by its beauty, felt the weight of their quest settle upon their shoulders. Here was the object of their daring, the symbol of their hopes for a future where all could live as equals. Together, they approached, their reflections caught in the mirror's depths, a testament to their unity and strength. With care, born of respect for the power they now held in their grasp, they prepared to remove the mirror from its pedestal. The heist of the century, conceived in the heart of the enchanted forest and executed with a blend of courage and ingenuity, reached its climax. Not with the clash of steel or the roar of battle, but with the silent acknowledgement of the bond that tied them all, 
a pact of paws and feathers, bound by the shared dream of a better world. With the mirror of tomorrow cradled carefully in their midst, the band of whiskers and wings began their retreat, the weight of their prize matched only by the burden of the task still before them. The castle, once a looming giant of stone and shadow, receded into the distance a silent witness to the daring that had breached its walls. Yet, as they fled, the silence of the night was shattered by the alarm's cry. The king's guards, roused from their slumber by the echoes of the disturbance within the castle's heart, mobilized with a speed born of urgency and the fear of their sovereign's wrath. The forest, their sanctuary and realm, stretched out before them, a labyrinth of darkness and danger. But it was in this darkness that their strengths lay, for each of them, from Renard's cunning to Shadow's stealth, had been honed within these very shadows. The journey was fraught with peril, for the king's guards were relentless in their pursuit. Mounted on swift steeds and armed with torches that cut through the night, they chased the band with a determination fueled by the theft of an artifact so precious. Athena, soaring above, her wings silent against the wind, guided her companions through the densest parts of the forest. Her keen eyes spotted the torchlights of their pursuers, allowing the band to navigate away from the danger. Bramble, bearing the mirror with a gentle care that belied his imposing form, moved with a speed that seemed impossible for one so large. His path was shielded by shadow, whose howls and swift movements served to confuse and delay the guards, leading them astray. Whisk, ever agile, darted between the trees, scouting ahead for safe passage. Her sharp eyes caught the glint of moonlight on metal, warning of traps set by the king's men to capture them. And Reynard, with a heart as brave as any hero of legend, led them with a confidence that inspired hope, even in the bleakest moments. His knowledge of the forest, a tapestry woven from countless nights under its canopy, was their guiding star. As they neared the heart of the forest, the forbidden glade, the pursuit grew more desperate. The king's guards, aware they were losing ground, pressed closer, their cries echoing like ghosts through the trees. It was here, in a clearing bathed by moonlight, that the animals made their stand. Surrounded and with nowhere left to run, they faced their pursuers, the mirror of tomorrow shining softly at their center. But the forest, their ally and protector, had not abandoned them. As the guards charged, the very trees seemed to come alive. Roots twisted and turned, ensnaring the feet of the horses. Branches lowered and lifted, creating barriers that confused and slowed their advance. The animals, seizing the moment, darted through the underbrush, their passage aided by the forest's intervention. Reynard, with a final glance back at the thwarted guards, led the band deeper into the woods, where the king's men dared not follow. The flight through the forbidden forest, a tale of courage, cunning, and the unbreakable bond between the creatures of the wild, ended not with the clash of swords, but with the quiet whisper of leaves in the wind. A testament to the power of unity against the forces that sought to divide them. With the mirror in their possession, and the king's guards lost within the maze of the forest, the band of whiskers and wings emerged into the safety of their domain. Their journey was far from over, but for now, they had triumphed a beacon of hope in the darkness, carrying with them the promise of a future they dared to dream. 
Within the heart of the forest, beneath the ancient canopy where light and shadow played their endless dance, the band of whiskers and wings gathered. The mirror of tomorrow, the prize for which they had risked everything, lay before them, its surface a calm pool reflecting the dappled sunlight. The animals, weary from their flight yet buoyed by their success, watched with bated breath as Reynard stepped forward. His paw, trembling slightly with the weight of the moment, touched the mirror's frame, beckoning its secrets to unfold. For a heartbeat, nothing happened. Then, as if awakened by his touch, the mirror shimmered to life. The forest around them faded, replaced by visions that danced across the glass with a clarity that was almost painful in its intensity. The images that appeared were not of the hopeful future they had imagined, but of a world consumed by shadows. Forests lay in ruins, their ancient majesty reduced to ash and ember. Rivers, once the lifeblood of the land, ran dry, their beds cracked and barren. And the creatures of the forest, both great and small, were nowhere to be seen, their songs and calls silenced. Athena, with a wisdom born of the ages, spoke first, her voice heavy with sorrow. The mirror does not show what will be, but what could be. This is a future forged from the path the kingdom is on. A warning of what awaits should we fail to change course. The revelation hit them like a cold wind, cutting through the warmth of their victory. The mirror, an artifact they had believed would be a tool for the good of the kingdom, now showed them a darker truth. Bramble, his strength a comfort to those around him, rumbled softly. Then we must use this knowledge not as a weapon, but as a beacon. We must show the kingdom the error of its ways, guide them to a future where such devastation can be avoided. The band united in their purpose, nodded in agreement. But as they discussed their next steps, a shadow fell upon them, not of leaves or clouds, but of doubt. Shadow, ever the guardian, paced the perimeter, his eyes reflecting the turmoil within. But how do we convince the kingdom to heed our warning? How do we bridge the gap that has grown between our worlds? It was Whisk, her spirit as indefatigable as ever, who answered. We have achieved the impossible once already. We have stolen the future from beneath the noses of the king's guards. If we can do that, then surely we can find a way to bring the kingdom and the forest together. Her words, simple yet profound, reignited the spark of hope within their hearts. They had faced the darkness and emerged victorious. Now they would face it again, armed with the truth and the courage to change the course of destiny. As the meeting drew to a close, the mirror's visions fading into the ether. The band of whiskers and wings knew the path ahead would be fraught with challenges. But they also knew that they were no longer merely a band of animals bound by a common goal. They were a family, a force of nature that would stand against the coming storm, ready to fight for a future where the forest and the kingdom could thrive in harmony. The reflection revealed had shown them the darkness, but within it, they found their light. With determination in their hearts and the mirror as their guide, they prepared to embark on their greatest quest yet, to save their world from the shadow of despair and lead it into the dawn of a new era. In the aftermath of the mirror's grim revelation, the band of whiskers and wings found themselves at a crossroads. The unity that had been their strength now wavered under the weight of uncertainty about how best to use the mirror's power. Some argued for its immediate destruction, 
fearing the darker future it foretold, while others saw in it a chance to guide the kingdom away from disaster. The debates grew heated, the once harmonious voices of the band now tinged with discord. It was in this atmosphere of growing tension that Reynard and Athena, the fox and the owl, who had led them so faithfully, uncovered a betrayal that threatened to unravel everything they had worked for. Late one evening, as the moon cast its silvery glow over the forest, Reynard, troubled by the arguments, took to wandering the woods to clear his mind. It was then he overheard a hushed conversation, the speakers hidden in the shadows of the trees. The voices were those of Bramble and a stranger, a figure cloaked in darkness. They spoke of the mirror, of its power not just to show the future, but to shape it. The stranger, with words as smooth as silk, tempted Bramble with visions of a forest unmarred by human hands, a sanctuary where no animal would ever fear again. But the price of this future was the mirror, which the stranger sought to claim for their own dark purposes. Reynard, his heart heavy with the weight of this discovery, sought out Athena. Under the cover of night, they shared what had been overheard, the betrayal cutting deeper than any thorn. Athena, ever wise, counseled caution. We must not act in haste, for mistrust will only serve to deepen the divide. Let us confront Bramble with what we know, but let us do so seeking understanding, not condemnation. And so, at the next gathering, under the watchful eyes of the forest, Reynard and Athena presented what they had learned. The band listened in stunned silence as the tale of Bramble's secret meeting was laid bare. Bramble, his face a mask of shame and regret, stepped forward. It is true, he confessed, his voice barely above a whisper. I was swayed by the stranger's words, by the promise of a future where our suffering would be no more. But I see now the folly of my ways. The mirror's power is not ours to wield alone, nor should its fate be decided by the desires of one. The confession hung in the air, a heavy weight that threatened to crush the fragile bond that held them together. But it was Athena who broke the silence, her voice calm and steady. Betrayal, even unintended, wounds us all but it is in forgiveness that we find our strength. Let us not forget that we are a band, united not just by our quest, but by our belief in a better future. In a the band, moved by Athena's words, found within themselves the capacity to forgive. The divide that had threatened to tear them apart was bridged, not by ignoring the betrayal, but by understanding its roots and confronting it together. The unforeseen betrayal, rather than ending their quest, served to strengthen their resolve. It reminded them that their journey was not just about the mirror or the future it showed, but about the bonds they shared, the trust they placed in one another, and the dream of a world where harmony could be restored. With renewed purpose and a deeper sense of unity, the band of whiskers and wings turned their gaze once more to the path ahead. They knew now that the challenges they faced were not just external, but within as well. Yet, fortified by the trials they had overcome, they stepped forward into the unknown, ready to face whatever lay ahead together. Chapter 3 The Battle for the Future As dawn broke over the kingdom, a sense of foreboding filled the air. A silent herald of the tumult to come. The band of whiskers and wings, 
with the mirror of tomorrow in their midst, made their way towards the heart of the realm, determined to unveil the truth and steer the kingdom away from the precipice of ruin. The kingdom, for its part, stood as if on the edge of a knife. Rumours of the mirror's theft had spread like wildfire, igniting fears and fantasies in equal measure. King Alden, once revered for his wisdom, now found his rule questioned, his decisions doubted. The castle, a bastion of strength and order, buzzed with activity as the king's advisers debated their course of action. Lady Verena and Lord Harrow, their ambitions unchecked, saw in the chaos an opportunity to cement their power. They whispered of war, of a decisive strike to crush the rebellion before it could take root. But unbeknownst to them, within the walls of the castle, a different battle was being waged. Queen Isolde, with the sage Emrys at her side, sought to uncover the truth of the mirror's power. To find a way to mend the rift that had formed between the kingdom and the natural world. As the animals neared, the kingdom's defences were rallied. The king's guards, clad in armour that gleamed in the morning light, took their positions along the walls. Archers notched their arrows, their eyes trained on the horizon for any sign of the approaching threat. Yet, as the first light of dawn touched the forest's edge, what emerged was not an army of conquest, but a procession of peace. The animals, led by Reynard and Athena, walked with a dignity that belied their humble nature. The mirror, carried by Bramble with a reverence that spoke of its importance, shone with a light that seemed to pierce the very soul of the kingdom. The sight of them, so unexpected and yet so compelling, brought a hush over the castle. Guards lowered their weapons, and hearts that had been hardened by fear began to soften. But it was not just the sight of the animals that stilled the hands of the kingdom's defenders. It was the mirror itself, which began to shimmer with a light that drew all eyes to its surface. The visions it showed were not of conquest or destruction, but of a future where the kingdom and the forest lived in harmony, where the divide between man and nature was bridged by understanding and respect. The realization that the true enemy lay not beyond the walls, but within the hearts of those who sought to wield power for their own ends, struck a chord within the kingdom. The seeds of doubt planted by Lady Verena and Lord Harrow began to wither, as the people of the kingdom saw in the mirror a reflection of what could be, if only they had the courage to change. The kingdom under siege, faced with the choice between war and peace, found itself at a crossroads. In the mirror's light, the path to a better future was illuminated, but it was a path that required bravery and sacrifice to tread. As the animals stood before the gates, the mirror between them and the kingdom, they did not come as invaders, but as messengers. They brought with them a challenge, not to the strength of the kingdom's walls, but to the strength of its heart. The battle for the future had begun, not with the clash of swords, but with the opening of minds. The kingdom, faced with the truth of the mirror's power, stood on the brink of a choice that would define its destiny and that of the natural world it sought to control. In the wake of the mirror's revelations, a silence fell over the kingdom, a breath held in anticipation of what was to come. The animals, with the mirror of tomorrow still aglow with the promise of a united future, waited at the threshold of change, their mission clear yet fraught with uncertainty. It was Queen Isolde, her heart heavy with the weight of her kingdom's plight,
who took the first step toward unity. With a grace that belied the turmoil within, she approached the band, her gaze fixed upon the mirror that had shown them all a glimpse of hope amidst despair. Your message has been received, not as a threat, but as a testament to the courage and wisdom that resides within the heart of the forest, the Queen began, her voice resonating with a sincerity that bridged the divide between human and animal. Let us not stand as adversaries, but as allies against the darkness that seeks to consume our world. Reynard, his eyes reflecting the depth of his resolve, stepped forward. Your Majesty, we come not to wage war, but to avert it. The mirror has shown us the folly of our ways, the destruction that awaits if we continue on this path. Together, we can chart a new course. Athena, her wisdom as clear and as sharp as the night sky, added, The mirror is but a guide, its visions a reflection of our choices. Let it serve not as a harbinger of doom, but as a beacon of hope for what we can achieve together. The fragile beginnings of an alliance took root in that moment, a pact forged not in ink and parchment, but in the shared understanding of the precarious balance upon which their futures rested. The Queen, moved by the conviction in their voices, extended her hand in a gesture of solidarity. We will face this challenge as one, for the fate of the kingdom and the forest are intertwined. Together we will confront the mirror's dark influence and seek a path to a brighter tomorrow, she declared. Her words echoing the resolve that had brought them all to this pivotal moment. The Alliance, though born of necessity, grew stronger with each passing day. The animals and the queen, along with a select few from the court who had seen the truth of their cause, worked tirelessly to uncover the root of the mirror's power. They delved into ancient texts, sought the counsel of sages long forgotten, and pieced together the fragments of lore that spoke of the mirror's creation and the means by which its dark influence might be undone. As their understanding deepened, so too did their bond. Prejudices that had once seemed insurmountable were eroded by the shared pursuit of a common goal. The animals, with their unique abilities and perspectives, offered insights that the humans had overlooked while the Queen and her allies provided resources and knowledge that the forest dwellers could not have accessed alone. In this unity, a new vision for the Kingdom began to take shape, one where the natural world and human civilization coexisted in harmony, each respecting the strength and the vulnerability of the other. The mirror once a symbol of division and despair, became the catalyst for a transformation that none could have foreseen. The alliance of unlikely heroes, bound by their determination to forge a better future, stood as a testament to the power of unity in the face of adversity. Together, they prepared to face the final confrontation their spirits buoyed by the knowledge that, regardless of the outcome, they had already begun to change the world. As the new dawn painted the sky with strokes of crimson and gold, the kingdom stood on the cusp of a moment that would be etched in the annals of history. The alliance of the queen and the animals, fortified by a newfound resolve, prepared to confront the forces that sought to steer the realm toward ruin. Lady Verena and Lord Harrow, blinded by their ambition, had mustered their loyalists, those who still clung to the promise of power the mirror seemed to offer. They stood arrayed against the defenders of the kingdom, 
a stark contrast between the shadows of greed and the light of unity. The air was charged with anticipation, a palpable tension that whispered of the duel of fates about to unfold. In the heart of the battlefield, the mirror of tomorrow stood, its surface calm, belying the storm of wills that raged around it. Queen Isolde, with Reynard and Athena by her side, stepped forward. This conflict need not define us, she proclaimed, her voice carrying across the divide. We stand at a crossroads, where the choice between division and unity will determine the future of our kingdom and the lands that surround it. Let us choose a path of peace. But Lady Verena, her eyes alight with the fire of her desires, would not be swayed. The mirror is the key to our ascension, a tool to ensure our dominion over all. We will not relinquish its power, not when victory is within our grasp. The stage was set, and as the first rays of the sun crested the horizon, the duel began. It was not a clash of swords or a battle of brute force, but a confrontation of ideals, a struggle for the soul of the kingdom. The animals, each using their unique abilities, worked in harmony to protect the mirror and their allies. Whisk darted through the lines, creating diversions and sowing confusion among Verena's forces. Bramble stood as a bulwark, his strength a shield against those who sought to break through. Shadow weaved amongst the combatants, his presence a reminder of the wild's indomitable spirit. And through it all, the mirror began to glow, its light growing brighter with each act of bravery and sacrifice. The visions it showed were no longer of a future marred by desolation, but of a realm reborn where the scars of greed and conflict were healed by the hands of those who had once wielded them as weapons. The tide began to turn, the forces of greed faltering under the weight of their own ambition. Lady Verena and Lord Harrow, seeing their course lost, launched a desperate assault on the mirror, seeking to shatter it and, with it, the hope of a united future. But they were met by Reynard and Athena, the fox and the owl standing as guardians of destiny. With cunning and wisdom, they thwarted the attempt, driving back the forces of division. The duel of fates reached its climax as the mirror, responding to the unity and courage of its defenders, unleashed a burst of radiant light that swept across the battlefield. In its wake, the shadows of greed were dispelled, and the hearts of those who had been swayed by promises of power were cleansed. As the light faded, a hush fell over the kingdom. The forces that had once sought to control the future lay vanquished, not by the sword, but by the strength of a bond forged in the face of adversity. The mirror, its purpose fulfilled, grew calm once more, its surface reflecting a kingdom united, a future secured by the alliance of unlikely heroes. The duel of fates had been decided, not by the triumph of one over the other, but by the realization that the true power lay in their ability to come together, to choose a path that led away from the precipice of ruin and toward the dawn of a new era. In the aftermath of the confrontation, with the kingdom bathed in the gentle light of unity and the forces of greed scattered like shadows at dawn, a solemn hush fell over the gathered defenders. The mirror of tomorrow, once a beacon of hope and a source of division, now stood silent its surface still as the deepest lake on a windless day. It was then, in the quiet that follows the storm, that the sage Emrys stepped forward, his eyes heavy with the burden of knowledge long held. 
The mirror, he began. His voice, a somber melody in the stillness, bears a curse as ancient as its creation. Its power to reveal the future is not without cost. The assembled band, both animal and human, listened with bated breath as Emrys revealed the truth of the mirror's origins. Forged in a time of great turmoil, the mirror was intended as a guide to show the consequences of one's actions and the paths that might be taken. But its creators, in their pursuit of wisdom, overlooked the balance that governs all things. The mirror draws its power from the very fabric of fate, and in doing so, it alters the course not just of those who seek its guidance, but of the world itself. A chill wind whispered through the gathering, as if the forest itself mourned the revelation. Each vision, Emrys continued, each glimpse into what might be, comes at the cost of what should be. The future it reveals is one torn from the threads of possibility, leaving behind a tapestry frayed and undone. Queen Isolde, her resolve tempered by the trials they had faced, stepped forward. Then the victories we have seen, the unity we have achieved. Have they come at the expense of the world's true destiny? Not entirely, Emrys replied, a glimmer of hope in his wise eyes. The mirror's curse is bound to the intent of those who wield it. In seeking to protect and unite, rather than to dominate and divide, you have tempered its influence. But the curse remains, a shadow over every vision it offers. The revelation hung heavy in the air, a burden shared by all who had sought the mirror's guidance. The alliance that had been their strength now faced its greatest challenge, not from without, but from within. Athena, her wisdom shining like a beacon, spoke. Then we must find a way to break the curse, to free the future from the mirror's grasp. Our unity, born of diversity and strengthened by adversity, is our greatest weapon. Renard, his spirit undimmed by the weight of the truth, added, The mirror showed us the darkness that could consume us, but in doing so, it also showed us the light of what we could achieve together. We will not be bound by its curse. Together they resolved to seek a way to undo the mirror's ancient curse, to restore the tapestry of fate to its rightful course. The task would be arduous, fraught with perils both seen and unseen, but they faced it as they had faced all challenges. United. The curse of the mirror, a shadow that had loomed unseen over their quest, now stood revealed in the light of their determination. It was a reminder of the price of power, of the delicate balance that governs the tapestry of fate, and of the strength found in unity and the courage to face the unknown. As they embarked on this new journey, the band of whiskers and wings together with the Queen and the Sage, stood as guardians of a future yet unwritten, their hearts alight with the promise of redemption and the hope of a curse broken. The battle for the future had taken a new turn, one that would test their resolve, their unity, and their very understanding of destiny itself. In the heart of the ancient forest, where the trees whispered secrets of ages past and the wind sang of destinies yet to be, the Alliance gathered once more. The revelation of the mirror's curse had set them on a path fraught with uncertainty, but united in purpose, they sought the means to break it, to sever the chains that bound their future to its will. It was Emrys, after days of tireless research and contemplation, who uncovered the grim truth. The mirror, he announced, his voice tinged with sorrow, was forged with a sacrifice, a life willingly given to imbue it with the power to transcend time. 
To break the curse, a similar price must be paid, a sacrifice of equal measure. A hush fell over the assembly, the weight of his words settling like a shroud. The idea of sacrifice, of a life offered in exchange for the countless that would follow, was a heavy burden, one that none wished to bear. Yet within the silence, a voice emerged, as clear and as steady as the first light of dawn. Renard, the fox who had led them through the darkness, stepped forward. I will be the one, he declared, his gaze unwavering. The mirror was awakened by my hand. Let it now be stilled by the same. My life, given freely, will secure the future we have fought so dearly to protect. Protest rose, a chorus of dissent from those who had come to see Reynard not just as a leader, but as a friend. But Reynard's resolve was unshakable, his decision born of a deep understanding of the sacrifices required to forge a better world. Queen Isolde, her heart heavy with the knowledge of what must come to pass, stepped forward. Let it not be said that the future was bought with the life of one who stood alone. If a sacrifice is needed, then let it be shared. We are an alliance, bound by a common cause. Your burden is ours to bear. And so, it was decided. The alliance would stand together, each member offering a part of themselves, a fragment of their spirit, to break the mirror's curse. It was a sacrifice of a different kind, one that spoke of unity and the collective strength of beings bound by a shared destiny. Under the light of the full moon, when the magic of the forest was at its peak, they gathered around the mirror. Emrys led the ritual, his voice weaving the ancient incantations that would unbind the power held within the glass. As the words were spoken, a light began to emanate from the mirror, its glow encompassing each member of the Alliance. The sacrifices, though not of life, were no less significant. Memories, hopes, and a piece of their very essence were woven into the spell, a tapestry of lives intertwined. The mirror pulsed with a brilliant light, a crescendo of power that reached into the very heart of the forest. And then, with a sound like the breaking of chains, it shattered, the pieces dissolving into motes of light that drifted upward, disappearing into the night sky. The curse was broken, but the cost was etched into the faces of those who had borne it. Reyna, Athena, Queen Isolde, and all the members of the Alliance felt the weight of their sacrifice, a poignant reminder of the price of peace. Yet, as the first rays of dawn broke over the horizon, there was a sense of hope, of a future unbound and a kingdom reborn. The mirror's curse had been lifted, not by the might of one, but by the unity of many. The sacrifice for tomorrow had been made, and though it carried a poignant cost, it heralded the dawn of a new era, one where the kingdom and the forest could thrive together, their destinies no longer dictated by the shadows of the past, but by the light of a future they would build together. In the wake of the mirror's destruction and the sacrifices made to secure a future untethered by its curse, the kingdom and the forest began to heal. The rift that had once divided them, fueled by misunderstanding and fear, was now bridged by a bond forged in the fires of adversity and strengthened by a shared vision of harmony. The alliance of unlikely heroes, whose courage and unity had shattered the chains of destiny, became the architects of this new era. Together, they laid the foundations for a world where the voices of both human and nature were heard and respected.
where the lessons of the past illuminated the path forward. Queen Isolde, her rule now defined by the wisdom gained through the trials faced, led her people with a renewed commitment to stewardship and compassion. The kingdom's borders, once guarded with suspicion, were open to the creatures of the forest, inviting a dialogue that enriched both realms. The band of whiskers and wings, revered as guardians of the balance between man and nature, served as emissaries, their tales of the mirror's curse, a reminder of the cost of greed and the power of unity. Reynard, his sacrifice remembered in every leaf and stone, became a symbol of the indomitable spirit that dwelled within the heart of the Alliance. The forest, once a place of mystery and fear, was now seen as a sanctuary, its secrets shared with those who sought to understand rather than to conquer. Athena, her wisdom as boundless as the sky, guided the efforts to restore the lands that had been marred by the mirror's influence, teaching the kingdom the ways of the wild, of balance and coexistence. The shattered mirror, its pieces scattered to the winds, served as a cautionary tale, a story passed down through generations. It spoke of the dangers of seeking to control fate, of the shadows that lurk in the hearts of those driven by ambition, and of the light that emerges when beings unite for a cause greater than themselves. Festivals were held at the border of the kingdom and the forest, celebrations of the unity that had been forged. Here, humans and animals gathered, sharing stories, songs and knowledge a living tapestry of the alliance that had saved their world. The dawn of the new era was marked not by monuments of stone or declarations of power, but by the laughter of children playing in the meadows, by the sight of deer grazing near the village green, and by the songs of birds that filled the air with music as pure as the hope that had been reborn. The kingdom and the forest once separated by fear, now thrived as a single realm, a place where the magic of nature and the ingenuity of man walked hand in hand. The mirror's lesson that the future is not a path to be commanded but a journey to be shared became the cornerstone of this new era of cooperation and peace. And so, as the years unfolded into centuries, the story of the Mirror of Tomorrow and the alliance that had overcome its curse became a legend, a beacon for all who sought to build a world where harmony prevailed over discord, where the future was a canvas painted by the many, not the few. In this new era, the kingdom and the forest stood as a testament to what could be achieved when hearts and minds were united in a common cause. The dawn had broken on a world reborn, its light a promise of endless possibilities. A reminder that even in the darkest of times, there exists the potential for transformation, for a beginning anew.